Recently, I reviewed some items that were sent to me by the company Fire Maple. The first one being the Polaris Integrated Cook System, which is a canister stove and pot all connected together. The next one was the Polaris Gas Pressure Regulated Stove, but the remote canister version. And the last one was the Fire Maple One Liter Heat Exchanger Pot. And they were I, you know, they're just great high value items. I like all of them. Well, now I have Fire Maple's new line of pots and pans and kettles made specifically for bushcraft. If you're interested in taking a look at them, keep watching. All right, just a couple things I want to mention before we get started. First off, I'd like to thank Fire Maple for sending me these items so that I could share them with you. Number two, this is not a review. Uh, I'm going to show you four different items, so I don't have time to really go into detail on, on each of them. I'll be doing that at a future point. Well, I'll review each of these items separately. Uh, part of the reason is I just got them. They really have only been in my possession a very short period of time, and since they are intended it made for bushcraft that means using them on an open fire and as you're probably aware we've been under a fire ban here pretty much all summer in Nova Scotia and the temperature and the climate is only now just changing hence you can see the little vest I have on where the temperatures are starting to drop we're starting to get a little damper from uh, rain that means it won't be long before the fire ban is lifted and I'll be able to have open fires again and after I have some experience on each of these items then I'll come back to you and give Give you some uh, a review on each of them. The last thing is I'm going to try and keep this relatively short and just give you the high overview of each of these items. I'll skip giving you all the specifications for them but if you are interested in them I'll put them in the video description below. All right let's go down to the bench top and get started. So this is the kettle, obviously made of stainless steel. It's a 0.8 liter or 27 ounce capacity. Um, yeah, it's, it's a nice kettle. It has that Nordic look to it, like other kettles of its type. I'm quite interested in trying this one. This may well be a good competitor for some of the other more popular kettles out there. It seems to be very well made. It has some unique features. The bale is definitely stand up. It actually not locks into place very well. The D-ring, although it doesn't have a cutout, does stand up so that it doesn't fall down, making it easy to get out. And here's something I've noticed on a few kettles lately, and I wasn't sure that if it was a mistake in manufacturing, and it's not, it's intentional. You can see there's a little bit longer uh, extension on the bale handle on this side rather than on this side. And that is to help resist the lid falling off when you go to pour. Uh, yeah, so it catches the lid from falling off. Now, it does make it just a tiny bit, and I mean very tiny bit, uh, more work to get the lid off if you're opening it up, but really, really nothing at all. So yeah, overall, nice kettle. Now that's gonna come back into the picture in a minute because uh, it, it actually matches up well with another item on the list, and that is this. This is a 1.2 liter pot. It has a dome lid, and there's another pot I'm going to show you, so I'm referring to this as the dome lid pot. It has a folding handle on top that locks down with one of those little wire extensions, so you just pop that off. It still locks down, but it, when you fold it over, it locks into place like that. It has a sliding part on the bar that helps lock it so it's not going to collapse on you unintentionally. And again, a stand-up D-ring on top. The lid fits very well on top. Nice deep pot. I like one of the things I'm noticing right now is I like how they have an angled uh, bottom on it, slightly rounded down here. And the benefit of that to me is it makes it easier to reach into the corners to clean the pot out. If you get anything stuck in there or you're trying to just get every last bit of food out onto your plate or bowl, then that's that rounded or angled uh, chamfered edge down here at the bottom makes that a lot easier. And uh, yeah, so it's a good size pot. It's nice to have the extra clearance. This is something I think you could probably do some baking in, and I may try that with this stove. But here's the thing I wanted to show you. The kettle, by the way, these all do, and I haven't shown them yet, these all do come with very similar nylon, mesh nylon uh, stuff sacks. They're almost all the same size, in fact. But this will fit, the kettle will fit right down inside. Lock it, or flip it over. 
So now I have an integrated kettle and pot all in one space and there's still room inside of the kettle if you wanted to put something else inside like your fire kit or maybe some food or uh, other items like that. So yeah, that's a really good size pot. Very well made again. Again, I haven't had a chance to try it out, but I will. That's coming as I mentioned. Now, if this doesn't speak bushcraft, I don't know what. When I first received this, I looked at it and thought, you know, it looks a little complicated. I'll explain in a moment. But when I started to play with it a little bit to see how well it would uh, work, I started to think about this as this is what the Zebra Billy Pot should have been or could have been. This is like an improved 12 centimeter zebra billy pot and that's the size. It is a 12 centimeter in diameter and it is a 1.2 liter pot and it has some unique features that you wish you had on your zebra. Number one, stand up bale and the stand up wire bale and some people complain that the bale on the zebra because it's a wide bar doesn't uh, you know, make it easy to hang over a fire. Not that I found that an issue, but this is definitely going to make it easy for hanging over a fire. Nice stand-up bale, doesn't fall down on you, very well attached to the outside of the pot, weld it nicely on the edges. You can remove this bale if you really want to. It's just a matter of pulling the, uh, the, the corner out and the bale will come right off. I'm not sure why somebody would want to, but you can if you want. It has fold-out butterfly handles. That's something that would be nice to have on the Zebra Billy Pot because that makes it a lot easier for pouring with, right? Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of making it easier to pour with, a little spout forced in or formed into the edge of the pot right here. Again, that makes pouring liquids from this so much easier. Now here's the other really unique thing. The lid is locked on, but it locks on with clips on either side that come off very easily. You can lift the lid off. And like the Zebra, it comes with a little pan inside. This one is all drilled out to be intended to be used for steaming. And it catches on a lip just down inside here. It is ideal for steaming food on top. So if you wanted to put some items in there and still have water underneath for whatever, uh, then you know this is gonna work out well. You may decide you don't wanna take that with you. No problem, you don't have to take that with you, but it's there already set up for steaming. Now, I wish I had thought of this first. I'm like, maybe it would have come to me, but I'll have to give credit where credit is due. The next idea I'm gonna show you with this came from another YouTuber, Shane Coffee. Anybody who's into stoves knows who Shane Coffee is, and I think he had this in one of his recent videos, and that is, this looks like it's set up intentionally to bake with. So like the larger stainless steel zebra pots, usually people do this with a 14 centimeter, 16 centimeter. It can be done with a 12 centimeter uh, zebra billy pot, and that is to be able to use it on its side by placing something inside while it's over a flame or fire and hot coals, that type of thing. Um, yeah, it will, you can use this one, but unlike those other pots, the lid locks on, so you don't have an issue with it falling open. So now I can set it up to over an open flame and bake with it with something laid in on its side. So I will be doing that as part of my testing and maybe even part of the demonstration video when I finally do a review. But once again, that's uh, something that came from Shane Coffee over on his YouTube channel. Probably I'll put a link to Shane's video in the video description so you can see where he came up with that. Ideal, really ideal. Thank you for the idea, Shane. I'll be sure to make sure that you have credit if I do a bake in this pot. All right, there is one more item I want to share with you, but I'll have to reposition the camera. So there's one more item in the Antarctic line of items that I want to share with you, and that is this fry pan. And what a nice fry pan it is. When they offered to send it to me, I wasn't, it's not that I wasn't impressed. I thought, okay, great, a nice stainless steel fry pan. Uh, I'll, I could certainly uh, use one of those, but it wasn't until I received it that I started to appreciate just how good a fry pan this is. So let's just take a quick look at it. By the way, it does come with its own nylon stuff sack. So it has a fold-out handle, squeeze it together, fold the handle over, slide the bar down to lock it into place so it doesn't collapse on you. So it's a nice deep fry pan, rounded in the corners like I've mentioned before. I really like that. Makes it easy to clean and get things out of uh, when you're cleaning up or, pour, or bringing your food onto your plate. Has a little pour spout. 
put into the corner. Oh man, that is nice too. One of the nice things to have on this. But here's what makes this stand out from a lot of simple stainless steel fry pans. This one has one of the clad bottoms. So it has aluminum and stainless steel cladding on the bottom, very much like your fry pans in your kitchen at home. So this helps to distribute the heat rapidly across the whole base of the fry pan and should, uh, well, as you can see, it hasn't been used yet, but should help in keeping foods from sticking in the bottom. It does add some weight, but really not a whole lot. As I mentioned, all the stats on these uh, items will be in the video description, but really it is a really nice fry pan, quite deep. You know, I can, oh yeah, I can really see getting into using this. The only thing that I felt was missing from this was a lid. And uh, it would have been nice to have had a lid attached. Maybe we'll, uh, I'll make that as a recommendation to, to Fire Maple that they consider adding a lid to this pan. But that's not that big a deal. And the reason is, here's something I've used quite often. This is a pie plate from uh, Fat Daddios. This is a nine inch pie pan, says so on the bottom. I picked this up at our local thrift store secondhand. It does have some scratches in it. They're hard anodized aluminum. They're about as good a pie plate as you can possibly get. It doubles for two things. Number one, it's an eating pie. I can use it for eating. It is my plate if I'm going to um, want to use it that way. It also can be used a, as a lid on top. The lip just extends out ever so slightly over the edge of the fry pan. So now I have a, an oven, essentially. It's a lid for keeping things warm inside of the fry pan or for you know bringing things, letting cheese melt inside. But if I want to use as an oven, I have the height necessary and I can put hot coals on top. And the best part of all, sits inside. Gonna bring that back far enough and locks into the fry pan itself and takes up virtually no extra space than the pan itself does. So yeah, it's a nice addition. Again, it would have been nice had it come with its own lid, but to be honest, I think this pie plate is even more useful than the lid would have been. All right, so the last item I wanna share with you is this wood stove from Fire Maple. Now, it's not part of their Antarctic line, but it is a stainless steel wood stove that's gonna work very well with the pots and kettle that I showed you a moment ago. This is known as the Maverick. Now, this is the three-sided version. It, there is a four-sided version as well, but I have the three-sided. So let me demonstrate how this works, how it goes together. So it comes with a nice nylon pouch, which is actually rubberized on the inside. Just a nice bonus, right? So the primary components are three sides to the stove, three-sided stove. Two of them are identical, and the third one has the feed port. Let's lay those aside for a moment. And then the front pocket on the pouch comes with a couple of items. Number one is the pictorial diagram for how it goes together. Well laid out. Should be easy enough to figure out though. This is the floor plate for the stove. It looks a little strange, but it makes sense once you see it go together. And this is an auxiliary or accessory uh, pot stand. So if your pot is not as big as the stove itself, so it won't span the stove, this can be put in to uh, hold smaller pots up. So we'll put that aside. Okay, let's put this together. So the three pieces go together with, uh, on each corner you'll notice that there are notches on one side, slots I should say, slots is probably a better way. And then over here there are uh, tabs that will lock into the slots. So pick any two sides to start with. It doesn't matter if they're right side out or inside out. So they go together like that. Same thing on the other side. And with experience, goes together easier. So that's my three sides. And then the last side, of course, is going to have a little bit of tension on it to pull it together. Not unlike if you're using an emberlet stove or any of the other three-sided stoves or four-sided stoves, I should say. But the tabs will slide through the slots. Because it's new, I don't have it there. Slid right into place. Because it was new, I don't have a uh, it kind of how should I say, manipulate it to a point where it's a lot easier to put together. So there you go. 
Very stable, put together three sides, except there is an open base on it. Now I'll demonstrate how the bottom goes in. So look at this design, right? This hole is intended for you to put your fingers through so that you can manipulate it as it goes into the stove. So it is more or less triangular. It has two tabs on the end, and those two tabs are gonna match up with any of the tabs on this, or the slots on the sides near the bottom. So just a matter of reaching in, sliding the slots or the tabs through the slots and then slide it forward. You do have to make sure that all the sides are in position. There we go, locks into place. And you can see how that locks in at the bottom. Now, there's one thing I'll say about the stove. It is an open stove. There is no ash pan underneath it. So you do still have to be careful about where you put this when you're burning wood in it because hot coals have the potential for dropping through. I'll probably be using it either in a fireplace or with something else underneath it. In fact, I made a little thing to go underneath this. Uh, little piece of aluminum flashing, that's all that is. And I just put this in this virtually, I don't even think it would register on my, on my uh, scales for weight. But I dropped this into the envelope and I can put this underneath the stove to keep hot coals and embers for falling through. All right, the last component to show you, of course, is how the pot stand works. So in the center of each side, there is a shorter tab that you can lay that across. There you go. And that's how the triangular pot support goes for a pot smaller than the span of this stove. So this has just been a quick introduction to the Antarctic line of products from Fire Maple. Again, I want to thank Fire Maple for sending these to me so that I can share them with you. So uh, as soon as the fire ban is lifted, I'll start using these out here in the woods over open flames so that I can bring each of these back and give you a more comprehensive review of each of them. I'm really looking forward to that, being able to have open fires again. As I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to make sure that all the specifications for each of these items are in the video description below if you want to see more about them. And of course, I'll put the links to them in the video description as well. If you have any questions or any comments, then please put those in the comments section below. Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.